can start now. It's five one. Yeah. Let's do it. The January 3rd, 2023 meeting of the West Haven ARPA Committee will now come to order. Will each member, paid professional, city official, please state your name for the record. Dwight Knowles. Ken Carney. David Grudberg, Carmody Torrance, Sandak and Hennessy. Chris Parson. Mike Glass. Rohan Smith. Uh, Keegan is with us and Councilman Quagliani is with us. Each member has received a copy of the agenda for tonight's meeting. Are there any proposed changes? If none, the agenda stands. Uh, the chair will now ask the clerk to paraphrase the November 1st uh, meeting minutes. No need to use last names and just go through it quickly for us. Thank you. November 1st, 2022. Call to order 550. All present except Neil, Iris, Mike. In attendance, Peter, David, Doug, Coulter, Jack Reagan, Keegan. Approval agenda for November 1st, approved. No discussion. Approval of meeting minutes for August 2nd. Motion approved, no discussion. Chairman's report. Review of the approved projects reports. UHY has informed Chairman Carney that it, if the city does a special project on drainage, the reimbursement applies to regular time and documents are properly filled out. Charming, Chairman Carney has directed UHY to meet with each of the food bank recipients to discuss the compliance part of the spending that money. UHY will present to the committee at the next opera meeting how you meet with the recipients. October 11, 2022, City Council meeting presentation update. Food Bank Council resolution rewrite. The resolution was written incorrectly and does not allow for us to get reimbursement for the 400,000 because the resolution was written exclusively for West Haven based companies and that is specifically against the rules. With that, the, re with that, the resolution has been rewritten with, without restrictions and being presented to the city council for consideration. Finance has been notified to transfer funds to the Board of Education monthly so they can do their food pantries. Chairman Connie has spoken to Vertical Church and they will present some invoices next week. Some of these invoices we may have to approve via email if it's time sensitive. Opera Committee policy statements and approval for form review. MARB has requested that when Opera Committee approves the invoice that we state in writing that no one on the committee has any interest in the approval of that contract. Motion to approve, no discussion, approve. Project number 2022-001, Carmody Company, invoice, uh, invoice number 527283 for 20,575.9. Uh, motion to approve, <coughs> Dwight, second Gary. Child Development Center, we will have to bring in HVAC engineer to consult with the con contractor on the issues on the elevation. Parks funds list reviewed, 100 <coughs> Plainfield Avenue, putting in trail, parking lot, and handicap accessibility and assign. A detailed list of expenditures will be sent to the committee for approval. Johnson Senior Center, contract being reviewed, stormwater management. Invoice approval, SLR number 173427 for $3,490. Approve Gary, motion to approve Gary, second Rohan. SLR number 173428 for $3,175. Motion to approve Ken Ferris and Rohan. Stormwater manager problem areas. Met with engineer on Baker Street and con contact. He is writing up reports and we will have a small invoice for that. <coughs> Recycling and reuse center, Contra contract has been signed. Child pedestrian safety, Seth Haley, prices are not done yet. Fairfax Street has been completed, minus the crosswalk painting. Broadband access, library, that is moving ahead and invoices are being submitted. City hall windows, Chairman Car Carney will investigate. Fire districts. 15, 16, and 17, the three fire chiefs will meet and do their acquisition air filtration equipment together to get the best price. The center district formulating 
a plan and they will have solid budget numbers within the month. West Shore Chief has spoken to Chairman Carney and he has rec recommended to him to go with the four architects we're carrying. He has agreed. Boardwalk monitoring cameras. Contract is being finalized. Archite ar the architect designer has started work on the project. Chairman Carney, Carney will recommend to the council that the 185,000 be applied towards cameras as a possibility. Police retention fund completed by ARPA committee. Youth employment fund, Doug will contact him. Paint to park field house. There is possibility that we are going to be short funds here. Chairman Carney will bring this up to the council. EMS premium pay, payroll problem exists and information is not available currently. That MARB is requesting. Police new business, police protection, bulletproof vests and EMS gas masks. Motion to approve Dwight. Second, Chris, no discussion, approved unanimously. Motion to approve the invoice for police vets, 48,255 and the EMS gas mask at 49,362. Motion to approve, Rohan, second, Chris, dis no discussion, approved. Reference to the letter from the Carmody, from Carmody on October 28th. Can we apply this $2 million expense incurred prior to the date of March 3rd? David will review and notify Doug. Motion to adjourn. Are there any uh, proposed changes to the minutes as read? <coughs> Anyone? All in favor of accepting the minutes? Do I have a, Aye. I'm sorry, do I, have, do I have a motion to accept the minutes? Motion to accept. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Chairman's report. Gen yes. So I just want to abstain from that vote. <laughs> Got it. All right, so um, <clears throat> Chairman's report. Uh, you may have seen the last council meeting that I was at, and in that meeting um, it was um, discovered that our vendors are not being paid, okay? So with that and with the council's help, um, we feel we have it under control now, beginning with an, a, a motion, a resolution that the council passed. And I'll just pass that around there. Just two more. So the way this is supposed to work, is the invoices come to the ARPA chair. Uh, the ARPA chair looks at the invoices, rejects invoices based on inspections if need be. So if, if I make an inspection and I don't feel the invoice warrants the amount of work that's been done, I reject it right then and there. Uh, if it's accepted, it goes to the uh, UHY accountants and they email back that it meets all of the various compliance requirements and then and only then does it make the agenda. We then approve the invoice at this meeting. I then create a letter uh, to the finance director and the purchasing agent, and I say these invoices have been approved and they're supposed to be paid shortly after. So, so that's the process. As far as the uh, rules on the actual um, invoices, what, what's required, uh, I got these here from UHY, pass those down. Do you mind, uh, Keegan, giving those, uh, you take one and uh, hand one to Mr. Ron there? Thank you. So for any of this money to be spent, um, there are different requirements based on the amount of money that's being spent. Uh, if you go down to purchasing supporting documentation, we need uh, to show that we have a purchasing ordinance, which we do. We need to get three verbal quotes if the task is under 2,500 with the understanding that the person spending that money will keep track of who gave him or her the verbal quotes. Uh, if, it's, if, the, if the job is between 2,500 and 10,000, uh, it requires three written quotes. If it's over 10,000, the um, project has to go out to bid and competitive bid through an advertising process. The invoices require a written contract, a purchase order, 
copies of permits if applicable, site visits, before and after pic pictures, and ed evidence of payment. And, and these are the rules that everyone's going to follow uh, spending ARPA money. So they've been clarified, they've been blessed by UHY, and this is what we're relying on going forward. Any questions on that? All right. Now, there was a newspaper article that talked about uh, why people weren't being paid. It was suggested that the city was waiting on some minutes. So there's a little confusion there. The, the minutes for, the, for these meetings are actually posted on the city website, and they're stamped by the city clerk. So if anybody needs a copy of the minutes, they just go to the website, they're there. However, um, there's a process within City Hall where the minutes have to be collected, put together with the invoices, and sent to be paid, and that was not being done. So when the finance director said, I'm waiting for minutes, there was a misconception that maybe our person, Dwight, taking minutes was not doing his job, and that's clearly not the case. And anyone can go on the, um, the website and can see that the minutes are there. They can also go back and look at nine years on the high school building committee. Dwight took minutes, and he never missed a month in nine years. So there, that was a little bit of a um, misrepresentation. Our minutes are being produced timely, thanks to Dwight, and, and we thank you for that. Okay. Um, uh, we do have a policy that I want uh, David Grugberg to quickly review. I'm going to pass this out. And I want to adopt this as the official policy of the ARPA committee. Pass that this down. One more for you. Everybody got one there? Go ahead, David. Sure. Um, everybody got a copy? The policy is basically common sense. It was drafted in consultation with Chairman Carney, with uh, UHY, Jack Reagan, and in the overall goal was to advance um, our um, overriding principle of best practices and transparency. I will read for purposes of the record, or read or paraphrase uh, what is basically common sense, which is you don't solicit gifts from people who are vendors with the city, who you're either doing business with or perhaps voting on business. If gifts are offered to you, you reject them and you report it. And if a project comes before the committee to vote and you have either a direct or indirect financial interest in the outcome of that vote, you do not participate in the vote, and you disclose the reason why you're not participating in the vote. So um, I'll read over this quickly so it's clear. ARPA committee members shall not solicit or accept any gift, gratuity, or thing of value of any type from any vendor, contractor, service provider, etc., or any other person engaged in business with the City of West Haven for any reason. Any such items will be refused and returned to the vendor immediately, Details regarding any such gift, gratuity, or thing of value will be reported in writing to a director of procurement. Committee members, to the greatest extent practical and reasonable, shall avoid engaging in personal business with known vendors of the city. If personal business is conducted with city vendors, committee members shall not solicit or accept any discounts, credits, or other economic benefit from those vendors for personal purchases that are not offered and available to the general public. Offers of special pricing, special discounts from vendors doing business with the city shall be refused, and again, shall be reported in writing to the director of procurement. Again, most of this, good common sense. The final section has to do with financial interest and recusal. If any ARPA committee members or immediate family members hold a direct or indirect interest in any vendor, contractor, service provider, bidder, or other entity under consideration by this committee for possible business with the city, those member or members shall recuse themselves from the proposal in question, disclose their reasons for recusal, and shall not vote upon that matter. Again, common sense. If uh, I should add that, um, you know, the direct or indirect financial interest standard is pretty um, 
straightforward, but if anyone at any time feels that they want, that a recusal is appropriate because of some relationship with a proposal that's before the committee, that should be disclosed and just don't vote. We have prepared an accompanying um, you know, disclosure sheet yep. form that will be filled out every time we vote on a particular vendor. vendor and that will be filled out after a vote. If it's approved, you write in your, anybody who voted in favor, write in your initials. If people recuse, they write in recuse. It will go around the um, podium here. And the goal will be that for every single vendor that we have voted to approve, going forward, we will have a written record of that vote, who voted in favor of it, who recused, and so on. Again, it serves the goal of total transparency. People can see what's going on, who's voting to approve, who has stepped away when appropriate because it's not appropriate for them to vote. So there you go. I think the policy statement is sound, it is simple, and it is straightforward, and I think it makes sense to adopt it. Excellent. Any questions uh, on the policy? Do you have a motion to accept it? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. The motion carries. The ARPA committee has adopted the West Haven ARPA committee policy statement. Take a minutes. You good? Moving on, if you go to page 8 of 84, here is the proposed uh, regular meeting schedule. And it pretty much follows what we've been doing on a Tuesday night at 545. The only exception is uh, July 4th happens to fall on a Tuesday, so we pushed it off to July 5th. Do I have a motion to accept the, re the proposed regular meeting schedule for the ARPA committee? Motion. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carried. Now what I've done is I've taken that schedule and I put it on these little cards. So you put them in your wallet so you have them. Pass those down. Okay. Keegan, I don't know if you want a couple here. Give one to Ron, too, if you don't mind. I'll add it to the other nine, nine years. That's right. <laughs> Thank God you're here, buddy. Thank you. All right. Uh, next, if you go to uh, page nine. Um, I met with the city council. And the message that I heard loud and clear was we need to consider projects that reduce um, tax burden on taxpayers in West Haven. And the way we do that is we reduce bonding costs. We take things off bonding, use ARPA money to pay for it. We also um, complete jobs that reduce operations costs. And some of these pro proposed projects, if done now, are in the form of maintenance and they'll save the taxpayer money because you won't be forced to do something at a much higher price when, when something breaks. So this has not been accepted yet by the council. I believe they will accept it on January uh, 9th when I uh, attend the next meeting. I've gone through all the projects. I'll quickly run them through with this committee, starting on P1, halfway down the page. Uh, Haley School has an ADA uh, ramp that's falling apart. Uh, it is an important ramp. I've spoken to the principal over there. Uh, that's a $100,000 job, and we believe ARPA should pay for that. The turf and fields uh, for West Haven High School, we have a uh, field, football field that is uh, beyond its lifespan. We have a track that is unusable, and we have a softball field that does not drain properly and cannot be used uh, most of the time. Uh, the proposal for $2.5 <coughs> is to replace the football field with new synthetic turf, replace the softball field with proper drainage and synthetic turf, and replace the track. That's something that the city of West Haven would have had to bond for. By having ARPA pay for that, that bonding requirement goes away. The um, next one is uh, we have a skate park on uh, Beach Street that has to be demoed. 24,000 of ARPA funds would pay for that. The Savin Rock Playscape at Savin Rock School <coughs> requires a refurbishment, and they're also requiring um, a groundscape, which we've done at other schools, which is uh, oil paints that go down uh, that create a track, a scenic environment for children, 
games that kids play. It's a learning tool. 54,000 covers everything at Savin Rock. Uh, we have a situation at the roof at the Noble Community Center. The council has already approved the expenditure in ARPA funds to replace the roof. And in doing so, we've discovered, the, the design team has discovered that the HVAC equipment sitting on top of the roof will not survive removal and reinstallation. So we're asking the council to consider 265 to put in all new HVAC, which not only solves a problem when you go to replace the roof, but reduces costs considerably because the 22-year-old equipment will now be much more uh, energy efficient. Paving and AD cuts citywide, uh, 1.6 million. Electrical, uh, 100,000. We have main breakers that have to be replaced. If we wait till we have to, we have to address those, uh, and they don't turn back on, you're talking 40, 50,000 a breaker in a pinch. If we do them now, you're talking $15,000 a breaker. So that 100,000 would cover electrical deficiencies in city-owned properties. Uh, Kerrigan School needs new boilers and all new piping. We estimated 4.2 million. Uh, that was absolutely and is presently on the bonding list. If we remove two and a half million, it saves taxpayers money. But equally as important, uh, if we do it this way, I will have an absolute real price before the city has to bond. So the second half may not be as high as the first half. So if I wait till bonding to do this project, I have to assume it's a $4.2 million job. If I get the money from ARPA and I start it, I'll know the real price and maybe it comes in at 3.7 or 3.8. It also alleviates the taxpayer of, of the, the, that financial requirement. Cameras uh, is a $200,000 ask to put cameras in this room, the third floor meeting room and the council chambers. They would turn on pretty much automatically uh, when a me meeting started. I'm working uh, to put that out to bid. If, if the, and the council has already actually approved that, by the way, that line item. Um, mag locks for City Hall. We have mag locks on half of the doors of City Hall, which is kind of crazy. Uh, this $75,000 ask would uh, put mag locks on the rest of the City Hall, which would allow employees to enter with a, with a swipe key. Uh, storage shed at the police department. So the police don't have any place to put their, their boat, their command center, or the many signs that they're responsible for. They just sit outside and rot. This would be an unheated uh, butler type building that would protect uh, city owned equipment uh, and assets uh, from the weather and would be built right on the property that the police station's on now. Um, uh, well, the concrete's going to take up a lot of that. So you're probably going to get something, Chris, I would say maybe 2,000 square feet. The storage? Yeah. Well, you drive a boat in, you drive a command center in, there's not much left. Oh, okay, so the command center is going to yeah. be part of it. Yeah, then. it's like a big bus, the command center. It's a garage. Yeah, it's a garage, yeah. yeah. The Butler Building garage. Yeah. Right now, if you go there, you know, they're responsible for signs. These signs are sitting outside, they're getting destroyed. The boat's outside, the command center's outside. There's other things I haven't even mentioned. 275 will clean that up and then alleviate space inside the building for their operations. Uh, 275 for the College Street locker room. So that locker room is not only a locker room, it's a garage that houses a vac truck that has to be kept, I think, at 60 degrees. Mm -hmm. I went up there with my infrared camera, and you can see the heat bellowing out of the building. It runs on diesel. It's got to be the most expensive building we have to, to run per square foot. This 275 would not only insulate that garage, but would redo the locker room and allow for uh, proper facilities for both men and women, which we don't have right now. Uh, 60,000 in emergency bleacher repair at Veterans Field. Uh, we got a consultant involved last year. They identified $55,000 in emergency repairs have not been done. Uh, I'm estimating it's, gonna, it, it's now going to 60. I wanna get done, that done as soon as possible so we don't have to say, hey, the bleachers are unusable. And that's what happens around here. We, we wait till something breaks to a point that we have to fix it and it always costs more. So this is preventative maintenance for 60,000 to restore the bleachers to structural soundness, if you will. 
So the, the council's already voted in approval already? No. Uh, they're gonna, they discussed it, they went over it, and then on January 9th, I'm going to go there hopefully for an approval. You know, I've only lived in West Haven for 38 years. Where's Veterans Field? Here in Newback. <laughs> it's off of Bill Hill Lane. The old Nike site. The old Nike site. Uh, no. Where's yeah. the football team? Please. There's a, there's a football field up there, new oh, turf. Hard to find. <laughs> I, I ran a turf job there about three years ago. Brand new turf, beautiful field, uh, aluminum stands, and we got some problems. We got a the Notre Dame plays there. It's Notre Dame's home team. Yeah, yeah. And, they, and they pay us to pay to play there too. They they pay, that's a yeah. yeah. so okay. Yeah. Where's this? Where's this <coughs> remodel Collis? That's the locker room I just said. Collis, oh, but it's the yeah. town barn. Up by the town barn, by the dog pound. Okay. Yeah. So if you look at these projects, they all are on this list with the goal of reducing taxes to homeowners. That, that's what it comes down to. It comes off the bonding list. It stops uh, from a much more expensive project coming out. And what I did is I went through the entire capital plan, five-year plan, and then I went through several other lists of every project in the city, and I came up with this list as the best recommendation uh, to spend the money. Now, in order to do that, <clears throat> we are suggesting that we take three and a half million, if you go on page 10, we get rid of the three and a half million for the Arts Center. We um, eliminate the broadband access for 45. Small business goes from a million to 800,000. It actually is a million here, it's 800,000. And the housing grant fund goes from one million to one hundred thousand, and that's how we get to fund these projects. Now I will tell you that I met with council people independently, and there wasn't a single council person who doesn't support the arts. The problem is the building that is being considered for renovation and ARPA funds is not suitable for an arts center. Um, it is 15,000 square feet, three floors. It is an oversized house. And no matter how you run the numbers, you are not going to be able to support that structure. You can't rent sections of it out. You can't have huge events there because it's too small. There's no parking. Um, and then you start looking at other communities and what they have done for art centers. And in every case that I've seen, is a large building, old warehouse, 40, 50, 60,000 square feet, one floor, no elevator, that gets utilized as an art center. Uh, Bridgeport has that right on the water. And you go in there and there's an open um, truss system. There's a kitchen there, there's a concrete floor, old windows, uh, sections of the building have been, are being rented to various artists, and you have an event there, you hold 600 people. They bring out these beautiful tables and, and have all kinds of events there. You can't do that in this building over here. It's too small. Uh, Lenders Bagels, that building up there on Route 1, which has got to be, what, 50, 60,000 square feet, that sold for 1.4 million. And we're considering putting three and a half million into this structure over here. It makes no sense. That structure, in my opinion, should go back on the tax rolls. It, its location, its size would be ideal for a law firm, uh, an architectural firm, uh, uh, a medical clinic. It, it doesn't suit the needs of an art center. It, it's too small. Yeah, but then what the city, the city would be without an art center <coughs> if we build this? So the city would be without an art center, which they don't have now, by the way, if we, if, and we don't have a building to spend it on right now. It makes no sense to put three and a half million dollars into that structure, and I'm being told it's not even enough to do the, the build out. So you'd, you'd get rid of three and a half million. All these items that we're trying to alleviate taxpayers, you know, alleviate for taxpayers would go back onto the tax rolls. And if you look at all the projects on this entire page, the one that gets the most grants from other areas is the arts. There's all kinds of grants out there for the arts. There's state grants. Mike, you can certainly speak to that. Um, there's state money for arts. There's other things that can be done. 
no one's going to give us a grant for electrical. No one's going to give us a grant for boilers. No one's going to give us a grant for the police storage. It's not going to happen. But those are things that the West Haven taxpayer is going to have to pay for at some point. We can alleviate that now and pay with the ARPA funds and, and not bury three and a half million into a building that will still not be finished, has no parking, and is not appropriate for an art center that the city would have to pay the operations of. It makes no sense. <clears throat> Go ahead. Just uh, real quick, on the Kerrigan work, um, would, there be, would that be eligible for any reimbursement from the state? No. It's not? No. Okay. Um, in the skate park, are they going to relocate that? Or are they just going to so take it So they're telling down? me skate parks are coming down in towns. And uh, right now, the one that's there is a uh, liability. Um, and because they're raise, raising Beach Street, they have to remove the skate park. Um, there is no money in the raising of Beach Street to remove the skate park. So with the ARPA funds, we'd remove it. And again, the taxpayer wouldn't have to pay for it. Right. And it is an eyesore. And I, I certainly would imagine it's got to be a, a liability issue. I was just wondering. Yeah. I think Painter Park, if they were going to relocate it, that would be a a good place to, to relocate it. And my final question on the Arts Center, um, what's the reaction from, from the arts community? Well, I'm sure we're going to hear it on, on the 9th, and the reaction <laughs> is going to be an ugly one. But again, I want to stress that you know everybody supports the arts. Supporting the arts does not mean you take $3.5 million of free money, dump it into a building that should be on the tax rolls, not being able to finish it and hope that the arts people can make enough money to support the building. And when you look around, go to any town, okay, they all have large butler buildings, large warehouses. We're seeing sales of 50, 60,000 square foot warehouses for a million five. How, are we, how can we justify recommending putting three and a half million into a 15,000 square foot house? The, in, See, I did, we had the art center for like an auditorium and stage. Yeah. Stuff. Yeah. Didn't you just build a big high school with I did. something like that there? Yeah. I mean, other people I presume <clears throat> are allowed to use it besides high school students, like local arts. Of course they are. I know the answers yeah. to these questions. I was just, no, of know, course. Just, but, but Chris, you bring up a good point. I mean, what happens is how my projection on that building when finished is $226,000 a year to support it. That takes care of your elevator, maintenance, quarterly. Uh, your fire and sprinkler maintenance quarterly, your cleaning after every event, your insurance, your utilities, your gas bill, your UI, your water, uh, you know, uh, your grounds, 226. You can't, that building can't produce $226,000 a year. It's impossible. I think you're likely to 226. Yeah, it might be. Yeah, it might be. Well, and I think my, my follow up on that would just be that there is federal infrastructure money coming into Connecticut, whether the art center is there or or they find another property i think there would be other opportunities sure there is. to to fund an art center yeah there's more money kicking around for arts okay. yeah. um, i apologize i have to pick up early um, a couple observations on this ultimately it will be the council's determination right everybody's right. identified that there are difficult choices here as uh, ken said nobody's saying they're not supporting the arts the question is you got to a one-time pile of money and how best to deploy that to benefit the city and the council will vote and the committee will honor that and do our best to make it happen. Um, the, uh, with respect to the approval forms, they should be stacked in order with Rohan. I noticed that I, Chris's name is spelled wrong on the form. I will, mm. will fix that going yeah. forward. Barnstein and, with an N. Oh. <laughs> no, that, but it's the I before E part, the, the E before I Obviously. that got messed up. Um, so the executed forms, I guess, leave them with Ken at yeah, the yeah. end, and I will take custody of Here are some extra blanks just in case something comes up that we didn't do in advance that you need to fill okay, one out. Thank you, sir. Okay. Uh, Chris, right. you could just cross your name, spell it correctly, initial put, the body, and then yeah, sign put, that put, one. Put, yeah, put your initials, uh, pass it on. Um, if you voted in to approve, if you recused, or if you abstained for whatever other reason, write abstain or recuse. So, so to be clear, it's not this committee's role to, rec to recommend jobs. Um, I've done this with the mayor's support, the commissioner's support of uh, public works, 
Um, I believe we have the council support, so there's nothing to vote on here. Um, I'm just keeping you informed that I think the council is going to go this route, and if they do, we'll, we'll, our job is to execute it. Any questions? As a taxpayer, I'm all in favor. Yeah, of course you're yeah. I, I guess my question is like, I know you said um, we're doing this to save the taxpayer, but how do we measure what we're saving the taxpayer? A couple ways. Number one, when you start, when you're planning to bond for $9 million and you only have to bond for five and a half, mm -hmm. that's saving the taxpayer money right there. A every, every million dollars is a mill in taxes. Okay. So right there, you're, you're, you're saving money. Now, it's a lot more complex than that, and I'm not the financial whiz here. I'm just telling you that if you bond less, you save taxpayer money. Over 20 years. Over 20 yeah. years. A period of well, time. The, the, yeah. the Center is a no-brainer. Yeah. I mean, that, that's, that's going to have ongoing costs, ongoing maintenance. 3.5 wasn't going to get it done. Correct. And we have a facility at the high school that's going to yeah. fill that need. I agree. Um, and the other thing that happens around here is we have a tendency of waiting till something breaks and blows up, and we end up paying a lot more. For example, uh, several years ago at Washington School, we had a boiler catch fire. Mm -hmm. The boilers were hopelessly outdated for, for 100 years. Not only were we paying outrageous gas bills, but it actually caught fire. And, and that's what happens around here. This plan does preventative maintenance and keeps those high expenses from hitting the taxpayer. Remember, all of our money comes from the taxpayer. So if you save money, everybody benefits. All right. Any other questions? I'd like to save money at the high school. Yeah. yeah. Very good. All right, so that is, um, that's the plan for January 9th before the city council. I'm sure we're going to hear from the arts people, but I would say to them that I'm doing them a favor, and the council will be doing them a favor, because that building is not suitable. Not when you can buy a warehouse, 60,000 square feet for 1.4 million. That, that's where they should be. Um, I'm gonna start with the actual list. Let's start with the um, CARES Act financial management. And we've got an invoice for UHY which we've gone through in detail here. It starts on page 11 and goes to page 84. I'm sorry, uh, I'm sorry, page 16, 17, 11 through 17. And it's for $20,388.68. Do I have a motion to approve? A motion to approve all three? Uh, sure. Make a motion to approve invoice 63040 invoice 63040 and invoice 63040 Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? These are all UHY? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Do I, any other discussion? Do you have a motion? I'm sorry, do I have a, a, a all in favor say yes? Yes. yes. Aye. 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 No discussion. No discussion. Cool. Okay. Moving on. I have a Carmody invoice starting on page 18. Um, page 19 as well. And this is for a uh, yes. uh, this form for the oh yeah he's gonna have to pass them around yeah you yeah. want to do them as we go yeah as we go we're gonna pass okay. them around. Uh, just send them right on down UHY. well you you don't know, there's you won't find one for UHY or comedy because we've already done that's already done right 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 yeah so the first one you're gonna find is uh, Joe Fam uh, let's see the first one you will find will be Joe uh, J O W so we're not ready yet. Okay. Okay, so we got an invoice here, number 528045, the amount of 2520 from Carmody. Motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Motion aye. carries. Next, we have JOW Films uh, invoice. Now, it's invoice number 1089 and 1086. One's for 250, one's for 350. 
Motion to approve. Wait, wait, wait. Let me, let me finish. I'm going to call for a motion here. Uh, I am going to recuse myself because my, one of my company's Babel modelers did work at the home of the principal for this company. Okay? So I am not going to vote, um, but I am going to call for a motion for approval. Better do that on the, the two invoices, the 250. Yeah. The yep. That's the filming that's going on here at these meetings. Motion to approve. Okay, do I have a second? Second. second. Any discussion? No. Okay. Yep. I only have the one for the 250. Oh, you, you, you just need one. It's just the company we're signing off on. Okay. Just one's fine. All right, all in favor say aye. 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 All right, motion carries. Save them all to the Just end. All right, next we go to the child development uh, center roof. So we have that's actually in design. If you go back and look at the minutes, it went through the contract process. We're waiting for them to start, and they've actually started. So it's in design. And we have our first invoice uh, from Antonazzi in, in the amount of 5700 We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. I'm sorry. Yeah. Go to page 24. Who second? Yeah. I second. Okay. Page 24. Okay. Uh, any discussion? Ken, you're reviewing all these invoices. So what happens is I get the invoice. I uh, review it. I'll go out to the site or I'll send Ernie out if, he's, if it's his, one of his projects. I then send it to UHY. If UHY approves it for compliance, it goes on the agenda. Gotcha. So the only invoices on the agenda are UHY approved invoices. There are invoices that did not make the agenda because UHY had not approved them yet. Okay. okay. All right, so 5,700, uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Next, we have an estimate here uh, in the Parks Fund for Frank Frankson Fence estimate, the amount of 982. Now, I had emailed these out to you guys, but again, I want everything to be uh, completely transparent. Even though we have an approval by email, I'm asking that we have an official vote. And what's happening is um, Ernie is going out. He's identifying deficiencies at all these parks, broken fences, broken lights, broken benches, roofs that have to be redone on pavilions. And he is um, getting this work done under the parks fund. So this is a fence uh, at Morris Park. For 982, do we have a motion to accept this uh, estimate? Motion. Do we have a second? Second. Any discussion? No. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Next, under parks, we have on page 26 a uh, sign light. This is the repair to a sign. This was also approved by email. Uh, $1,114. Do I have a motion to approve? Motion. Okay. And do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries. Next one is, this is, uh, I can sign this one, right? Fence and fence, yeah. Next one is uh, Ivory League Landscaping. Now, this is on page 27. So my company, Baybrook Remodelers, has a long history with Ivory League and has an account. I will recuse myself from voting on this. Mm -hmm. Ivory League Landscaping is a supplier of landscaping and pavers and things. My company buys pavers from them on a wholesale basis. So uh, I'm going to ask for a motion to approve. So motion moved. to approve. Do you have a second? Mike? Any yep. discussion? Which one is this again? Number three, Ivory League Landscaping okay. under Parks. All in favor uh, say aye. Aye. Okay. Now these are estimates. These aren't invoices yet. Okay. okay. All right, next we have the food bank. Uh, the food bank, uh, we are setting up a meeting with UHY and the four recipients, five recipients actually, and we're, we're going back out to bid um, for the food bank to prove to the feds that we did not 
uh, eliminate anybody from the last bid. Uh -huh. Johnson uh, Senior Center is in design. That's renovation work to the Senior Center. Stormwater management. We've got uh, a total of three million. Uh, we are expecting the truck within the next 60 days, from what I understand. And we do have some invoices. The first one is CDM Smith, and this is under the grant matching funds. So what happened was the city put out to bid for a master study to be done. CDM was chosen by a group, by a, a, a committee. Um, I did not sit in that committee, but Abdul did. I believe McCarthy did. I think Doug did. And CDM Smith has done work in the city before, and it was a good value because um, they can use some of the past history and kind of clean this thing up. Uh, so what they're specifically doing is they're studying the three rivers in, in West Haven. They are looking at um, the best way to stop flooding, and they're doing a master plan to alleviate flooding in, in our neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. okay. So their, their first two invoices are 25000 and 10000 Do I have a motion to approve? So just curious, I mean, who's attesting to the fact that this work was completed to their... This one came from the city engineer, Abdul. Yeah. So I mean, he's approved. He's approved it. It's. it's yeah. Oh yeah. yeah no, nothing makes this unless it's approved. So Abdul sent me the email. Uh, he also sent the bids of all the companies. He also sent the scoring sheets, and uh, he's approved the invoices. His signature is actually on the invoices that I received. I second it. If you go to page 28, you'll see his signature. And page 29 is a description, page 30, and page 31. Who, who you second it? Yes. Okay, so we're in discussion. Any, any other discussion, Chris? Mike, you have a question? Just, yeah, real quick. Yeah. What is the timeline on the, the study and, and the $500,000 contract amount? Does that include the implementation of, of corrective actions, or are they just doing the plan? Um, I may have to have Abdul come and talk to you. Uh, I can tell you this. This was sitting dormant for a while. I came into City Hall. I said, guys, we got to get this moving. And now it's, it's, they got it moving, okay? Um, I believe they're going to, they're going to do uh, discovery, but more how to solve the problems. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's my understanding because a lot of you know a lot of discovery has been done over the decades recommendations because i know we wanted to i think we wanted to prioritize um yeah. from from worst yeah. and, and attack the worst i don't have a time frame problems. for you though but but they have started but this is actually just a study not getting any no actual work done well it, it's a it's a it's a blueprint and a scope for us to go out to bid to get the work done and they don't have any money for that yeah. we do we have uh 1.4 million in here Five hundred thousand of it's just for their study. Correct. Yes. All in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. Next, I have New England uh, Geo System. This is for four hundred and twenty-five dollars. This was some um, uh, mapping that had to be done. Um, and I forget, guys. This may have been. Yeah, this is, it's under stormwater. I don't remember exactly what the mapping was. I, I did at the time, but I've since forgotten. Do we have a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Second. Second, any discussion? All in favor say aye. I missed two. Aye. Second that. Chris? Chris. Motion carries. All right, next, we have a ask of $149,934. Uh, the city received a grant of $508,678.18 from the National Fish and Wildlife Foundation, specific to the Cove River restoration. And when they restore it to its original um, state, it re alleviates flooding. Um, but it required matching dollars from the city. We have a million dollars in ARPA for matching funds. 
uh, UHY tells me this is completely appropriate to approve the 149, 934 uh, out of the ARPA funds. Do you have a motion to approve? Motion Certainly. to approve. Second. Okay, and we get second. Any discussion? Go ahead, Ron. Is it appropriate? Oh, yes, of course. Yeah. I'm not sure that this request came to us for approval. Typically, if there's a grant, uh, we would approve it. If there's a match, we would see it and approve it. Now, it may have come a year ago, or but I don't remember anything current that came in front of us. So I, I just am questioning whether this came in front of the council for approval or not. That I don't know. I could amend the motion to say, say pending council, council review. approval, review or something, or? I, mean, yeah, I would just make sure that it already, if, if it came to us and we approved it, that's fine. Yeah. If it didn't, it needs to, it needs to do that step. Okay. All right. I'll leave the motion and then I'll follow up on this tomorrow with City Hall. Thank you, Ron. Where are we? Do we, do we get it? So no, no, no. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to match the funds, but the the grants writer cannot go forward without council approval. Okay. So, so he wouldn't have access to the funds until he can prove that the council approved the grant. All right. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Okay, motion carries. All right, stormwater uh, management problem area update. We've, we have slightly under 1.5 million. I can tell you that uh, we went to Baker Street we uh, did, we had the city officials do some work there. Uh, the commissioner of public works tells me he rented a machine they don't own, and they went around the city unclogging things that haven't been touched in a decade. I have those invoices coming to me. They'll be reviewed by UHY, and then they'll go on the agenda for approval from the ARPA committee. Um, we have some issues down on contact drive. We have an engineer looking at some solutions there for flooding. Uh, four or five houses get wiped out in almost every rainstorm. So that bucket of money is slowly being spent down. And we're anticipating invoices soon. Recycling and Reuse Center, um, the consultants have started that process of design. And if you go to page 35, this is the transfer station design contract. Um, this is the first uh, invoice, which is $1,200 out of a $6,000 proposal for data collection and survey. The total bill is 46500 This is the first 12. So when you see this, you see that, that work has started. This has been approved uh, by City Hall, and I'm looking for a motion to pay it with ARPA funds. Motion to approve. Do I have a second? All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries. Next, we go to child pedestrian uh, safety. Um, so we had asked the council for some contingency funds. They gave it to us uh, and were able to uh, pay this invoice with those contingency funds out of the uh, sidewalk account. It's $26,216.53. It's from Elm City Materials, who has a standing contract with the City of West Haven. Uh, it meets all the compliance and bidding required by the ARPA uh, guidelines. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Are we approving both the 26 and the $490? No, because it's separate, separate jobs. So the, the 26000 is sidewalks that were installed at Fairfax Street to service Kerrigan School. Okay. Um, any other discussion on that one? All in favor say aye. Aye. Okay, I missed the uh, uh, approved motion. I made the motion. Okay. Chris. Seconded. Chris. Okay. All right, so that's approved. Next, we have a small invoice for 490. We have a sidewalk servicing Forest School that was collapsing, that needed uh, some work, um, and they did it for $490. Do I have a motion to approve? Motion. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. You'd sign that. 
sign that, sign that. Okay, next I have the library. Um, go to page 41. And we're asking for $8,070. Let's see, that might be on the page. You can't read it, it, it didn't copy so well. So it's on page 40, I believe. Page 40 or 41? 41. 41. Oh, is it 41? Okay. 64. Uh, 40 is the question. 40? Oh, okay. It's 40, right? Can't even see it. Yeah. So there's a labor component attached to teaching these families who don't have internet, and this uh, covers that. Do you have a motion to approve? Can't approve because I can't see anything on this. So this library, th this is for what? And how much is it? Uh, it's for, it's for $8,170.44, and it is to reimburse them for the man hours that they're working with the 88 families to implement the laptops and the internet. Now is that the director of the library signature on here? Yes. That, that work's been done? Correct. Okay. You say yeah. 8,144 Yeah, if you look on the agenda. $8,170.44. And yeah. Okay. Has anyone gone and to see the work? Yes. It's a navigator program, and, and it's not exclusive to West Haven, by the way. A, a lot of towns are doing it. Um, I, I think it's a good program, and it's definitely being, being done. And they're pretty excited about it, and they're helping families. All right, do we have a, a, a where are we with this? Do we have a second on this? No, uh, no motion, motion yet. Right, do we have a motion to accept it? Motion. Do we have a second? Second. Any discussion? Just question. So this is labor to teach people how to use the internet. So what happens? So what, uh, and yeah. who's doing the teaching? Just like uh, they have library personnel doing it. So it's a program where um, you get vetted, you qualify. You don't have internet in your house. You don't have a computer. Uh, the library through the Navigator uh, program gives you a laptop and an internet box which the library pays for through ARPA for one year. Mm -hmm. You take classes to learn how to use the laptop, use the internet, and at the end of the uh, program, you keep the laptop, and then you have to pay the internet after 12 months. Okay. So, so they're bringing 88 families sort of out of the dark ages, and, and they're doing it here. To me, this is one of the more important uh, spends for ARPA. Are they giving it to elderly people or are it's giving it to teenager who is benefiting from this? So I leave that to them. But what I've seen, I've seen families as large as five or six mm -hmm. who don't have internet in their house, who are struggling to do homework, who don't have a laptop in their house. Okay. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to figure yeah. out. Yeah. Now, is there an old person, uh, an elder person? I don't know. You know what I'm saying? But, but, but when I saw that, it's enough for me. So, um, do, we, do we, any other discussion? Yeah. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Now we have an invoice for the actual equipment. This is page 41 and 84. Correct. And these are Chromebooks, and there's 20 of them here. Those are all built into that invoice. Oh, they are? Yeah, so, if you, so it, it's hard to read. I'm but, sorry. Okay. Um, Forty-one is the first line of that invoice, which is fifty-six fifty-four. Um, the laptop. Broad access. Broad access. Line two of that invoice, which is oh, I see. printer. Okay. And then forty-three through forty-five is the payroll documentation. Okay. So fifty-six hundred of the eight thousand changes hardware, not correct. Right, right, right. Okay. So I don't have that invoice. <laughs> We should be approving, right? Stationary printer. So they are not getting printed. They're just getting the the um, the computer and the internet, right? So printer is not also going to the household. I don't think I have not heard about printers. No. Yeah, I'm only sort of guessing on the printer thing there because what they've given there the bank thing is a PRI printer. So yeah, I mean that could be the three nineteen. I'm not sure. 
sure what that is. Because I can't really read the invoice. But yeah. If you go to page 43. Think, actually, no, that's the, that's the flyer. The 319 is the flyer? The 319 is the, is the flyers. Let, let's go to page 43 for a second. If you read this paragraph, this gives you detail. Oh, okay. Yeah. On, yeah. On, what, on what they're doing. Yeah. Now, now Keegan, my question to you is, sure. this agenda may be inaccurate, so I want yeah, to make, so the 8170, that includes the Chromebooks and the labor? Yeah, but your, your agenda isn't inaccurate because the next item is actually page 46, which is another CDW. Got it, okay. Uh, yeah. Here it is, okay. You had are just supporting the invoice from the library. Yeah. All right. It's like 42, and 43, 44. So if you go to page 46, you got your next invoice, and here's 20 Chromebooks. 20 more Chromebooks, I think. For $5,805.20. Do I have a motion to approve? Motion. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Any discussion? I'm good. I'm good. All, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. All right, city hall windows, I don't have information for you. I will have at the next meeting. The fire districts uh, met with all the chiefs today in my office uh, at 2 o'clock. And we gave them a list of the spending rules, which I handed out to you earlier. We also um, discussed their projects. And all of their projects fit within the ARPA spending. And very quickly, Allentown <coughs> is going to acquire some land and houses on the Boston Post Road in preparation of a future firehouse. The center district is talking about revamping their Malloy Road um, station uh, and turning it into a usable modern station um, or buying houses on, on their center district firehouse to expand. And West Shore is talking about renovating their Benham Hill station for better sleeping quarters and renovating their Ocean Avenue station for better sleeping quarters. So we had a long talk, it was a great meeting, and everybody seems to be on point. <clears throat> so that is the fire districts. They also have uh, some money that's earmarked specifically for better ventilation. And the ventilation vendors have been out to inspect and they're be getting prices on that soon. I think it's like 25000 for a house or something. Uh, next, the boardwalk monitoring cameras. I have a meeting set up with the uh, chief and his staff uh, mid-January. Uh, the engineer is, the, de the design professional who's engineering the system is bringing in a sample camera uh, and showing the chief how it works and how simple the programming is and the software and that'll be the basis for design before it goes out to bid so that's moving in uh painter park field house i believe is um a little bit stalled right now i will get updates for you on that at the next meeting and we have uh ems hazard pay uh supporting information we have a big talk on that today i believe that's still alive and they're gathering the information they need to present to Mark to try and get that approved. Is that what all the 48 through forever is? Oops. 48 through 74 is all the EMS uh, supports. Didn't think we were going to do it tonight, buddy. <clears throat> well, I didn't realize 20 pages were both here. Okay. <laughs> all right, go to page uh, 75. And here we have a ARPA update from the parks spending from our friend um, Ernie. And as a result, we have some invoices to share with you that are based on the estimates you just approved. And that would be under new business. Okay. The stump chopper hasn't been approved though. It's under new business. That's fine. Oh, that's yeah. All right, so I'm going to ask um, under new business, just give me one second here.
go to page uh, 78. Okay, so you previously approved um, Elm City materials for the sidewalk replacement for 2608.16. That work is done and has been inspected by Ernie. I need a motion to first put it on new business. I want to put invoice number 18148 under new business from Elm City Materials. Any motion? Motion to approve to put on Jen. Number 18148. A new bidder second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Uh, motion carries. Now I'd like to actually approve the invoice. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries. Next, go to page um, 80. This is the $420.40, like a motion to put it under new business from Elm City Materials. Motion. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries. I'd like to now approve the invoice, uh, invoice number 18149 for $420.40 from Elm City Materials. So have a motion? motion. So moved. Second. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries. All right. Next, we have page 82. This is Franks and Fence Company. This is the actual invoice for the work that you approved earlier. Mm -hmm. um, I'd like to put that invoice number 12784 for 982 from Franks and Fence Company under new business. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. I'd like to approve the invoice now. Do I have a motion? Motion. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Okay, next we have Ivory League landscaping invoice in the amount of 1875. Again, I'm going to recuse myself from voting. Do I have a motion to put it under new business? Motion to approve it on new business. Second? Second motion. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 I'd like to now have the invoice approved. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Uh, any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Make sure you put in the minutes that I am not uh, voting on that. Next, you have stump choppers. Uh, an invoice for 1595, and that is on page 84. 84, Chris. Page 84, buddy. There we go. 84 of 84. It's 659. Holy moly. We end up with stump chop. <laughs> um, we're actually not done yet. Do you have a motion to put that invoice 3138 under new business? Motion. motion. Second. Okay. All right. And do you have a, you get the second in discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 I'd like to now approve the invoice for 1595. Do you have a motion? Motion. Second. Okay. Do you have any discussion? Motion carries. Next, we have a PO here. Pass this down. Sorry, Chris. <clears throat> this is for uh, $8,500 to replace the roof at Shingle Hill Park. Now, I went there. I inspected it. The picture shows the new wood that was used in the roof. I took a picture of the actual roof. It got corrupted. I couldn't print it out for tonight. But if you go there, there's a brand new architectural 50-year roof on that pavilion. This picture highlights the wood that was replaced. It's part of the PO for 8,500. Um, I'd like to put this under new business. Motion to put it under new business. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 I'd like to approve the invoice. Uh, now, for 8,500. Motion to approve. Second. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. We'll pay that invoice. Okay. Next. Whoa. I have. You know, when you meet once a month, things happen kind of quick here. Pass those down. Thank you, sir. Down, please. Thank you, sir. Is. Yep. Oh, 
Okay. Um, I would like to put estimate number uh, 202082 SP for Swamp Scott Park in the amount of 22646.27 from Childscapes on the agenda under new business. Motion. Motion. Okay. First and second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All right. Now that it's on the agenda, I'd like to talk about this by asking, started by asking for a motion to accept the estimate. Do you have a motion? So moved. Do you have a second? Second. Okay. And let's go to discussion. So Ashford Street, uh, at the end of Ashford Street, you actually have a small park that's very um, worn, if you will. And this proposal brings in new equipment, cleans it up, puts a base down for the kids, um, and it's off the state bid list. And I can show you a picture in a moment here. Is this part of the, the pocket parks? Correct. Okay. And we have an active community over there that has been taking care of what's there. This isn't like a dumpy park. You'll see that in a second. This will really clean that up too. Yeah, very nice. So once we get this park up and running and put them in motion, who oversees and governs these parks to make sure that they are um, keeping up to standard? It depends, it depends on um, what bucket of money. In this case, Ernie Chirelli and Leo, the tree warden, are managing these projects for me. And the ongoing maintenance would be park yeah. maintenance. Well, Correct. the answer is yes, but I think they're cutting a deal with the community. Um, and they're participating in the maintenance of this park. <clears throat> now, the other thing they're doing here is they're creating a, a, a path to the next street down so both streets can access the park, which is kind of cool. I'm going to try and pull this up for you. Secluded area. Yeah. Yeah. It's a nice little, nice little pocket park. Here we go. This is as it is now. Yeah. So they're going to create a path to the next street over. Mm -hmm. They're going to replace all of the um, equipment, or not all of it, but add to it, and put down the proper base for safety. And I'm looking for a motion to approve this estimate uh, from Childscapes for 22,646.27. Motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Okay, so that's approved. All right, is there any other proposed new business? Anybody? A little bit. All right. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Motion, motion to adjourn. Second? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Guys, have a great night. Thank you very much. We'll see you next month.